Here's my second attempt at manual film photography using my Leica MP. For roll number two, I'm using the Kodak Gold 200 on the Leica MP using the 35mm Leica Sumalex F1.4 a steel rim reissue. I made some slight progress compared to rule number one, but still made a lot of mistakes. So I'll break down this video into the camera, the lens, uh, the film, and finally the photo results. The Leica MP is still the most beautiful camera I've ever seen or handled. I like that glossy black finish, the textured leather, the solid feeling, and it's still more compact than the Q3 or the M11. But more than that, I'm enjoying the feeling of getting into a mechanical camera, a manual settings, and film photography. Loading the film at the bottom, and the tactile feedback of uh, clicking the shutter button, and cranking back the advanced lever and having it snap back. And film photography is a challenge on another level. It seems like any obstacles that digital photography overcame, uh, now all the barriers are back with film photography. The ISO is fixed by the film speed for the whole day. And after choosing the aperture, there's only a small range of shutter speeds to choose from. And even if I do most things right, the result is still an imperfect photo compared to digital photography, where that can seem sometimes too clean or too perfect. The lens I chose for my second roll is the 35mm Sumalex a steel rim reissue, and I chose this to try to get some kind of vintage look to my photos on my film camera. This is a reissue of the original 1961 lens using a similar optics but with modern lens coatings. It's a very compact and lightweight lens, uh, but as far as the build quality, it doesn't stand up to a modern uh, Leica lens. The aperture ring is still clicky and easy to move, but it feels just so slightly wobbly, which you wouldn't find on a modern Leica lens. But the focus ring is still smooth and easy to use, and it has that focus knob at the bottom, which also includes an infinity lock, uh, which you have to uh, depress to unlock it uh, once you reach the infinity mark. It comes with the uh, two hood options. Uh, one is the circular hood, which uh, screws in. And it screws in very securely, uh, but it does add uh, extra bulk uh, to the lens. The other option is a square snap-on hood, which is slightly difficult to get on, but once it's on, it feels fairly secure also. But the problem with this square hood is that if you want to use a UV filter, uh, you cannot uh, snap on the square hood. Uh, but you can still screw on the uh, round metal hood. Um, so you can use a filter and the uh, round hood at the same time. And I'll show you how uh, this round hood uh, looks uh, mounted on the camera. I think it looks nice. Uh, I like that extra black which uh, matches the body but it does add extra bulk uh, to the camera and uh, I think it's just a little bit too bulky so I generally don't use this uh, hood. Normally I just use this lens with the UV filter 
which I think gives adequate protection to the front end. And with the uh, square hood, uh, again, I think this still looks a little bit too bulky. And the uh, main downside is that I can't use my filter uh, with this uh, square lens hood. Uh, so I generally don't use this hood either. The film I chose to use for my second roll is the Kodak Gold 200 and this is described as a daylight balanced color negative film with fine grain and high sharpness and a wide exposure latitude. So I used this film to shoot outdoors on two separate days but I had to wait and pick uh, two days that were sunny enough to use this film. But I was only able to get half a roll of photos out of this roll uh, because of a dumb mistake on my part because I didn't know how the camera worked. So normally my routine is that I would wait for an opportunity for a shot and then I would advance the film, uh, half press the uh, shutter to activate the light meter, make my adjustments and shoot the photo. The light meter uh, can't be activated until uh, the uh, lever is advanced. Uh, so I wasn't uh, advancing the film uh, until my next shot. Uh, so the light meter would not go on inadvertently and uh, waste battery life. But this is probably not good practice uh, because about halfway through the roll, I was about to take a photo, but I could not advance the uh, film uh, lever and uh, I thought something was stuck and something was wrong with the camera uh, so I uh, rewound the film and took the canister out but nothing was wrong with the camera uh, the problem was uh, that uh, I had uh, forgotten that I already had advanced the lever and the camera just wouldn't uh, advance uh, twice uh, so you can only advance it once without releasing the shutter and that uh, prevents you from advancing twice and uh, wasting a film. So in this case, the camera is smarter than me. It won't let you activate the light meter until you've advanced the film and the camera is ready to go. And it won't let you advance the film again until you've actually taken a snap. I used the same online film lab to process these photos and these are the scans that I got back. But this time I made some small edits to adjust for exposure. Uh, most of these photos I overexposed on the camera about half a stop, uh, but they were still slightly uh, underexposed, uh, so I brightened them up after uh, editing. So now I think the exposure is uh, closer to normal on most of these photos, uh, but I'm still not sure about the colors. The colors still seem uh, more on the warmer side and the golden side, and uh, still not uh, accurate according to uh, what I saw that day. And they also seem a little bit more uh, washed out than normal. Uh, even uh, in real life, uh, these colors uh, seem more vivid and more saturated. And I'm not sure if all this is due to the characteristics of the film stock or whether this is uh, due to the film processing. So on my next roll, I'm going to try out a, a different uh, film lab to process uh, that roll. And as far as the lens, uh, I do see some of the vintage characteristics uh, from this uh, steel rim reissue uh, that I saw when I used it on my uh, digital M11. Uh, so it does work well on film too, uh, but it doesn't overdo any of the effects. I think this lens does well on both digital and film photography. On my next roll of film on the Leica MP, uh, my third roll, I'll be using another uh, reissue lens, the 28mm Sumeron f5.6, and a different film stock, the uh, Kodak Professional Ektar 100. And uh, I'll be overexposing one full stop, uh, so the exposure should be better. And I'll be trying out a different uh, online film lab uh, to see if the uh, colors come out different also. So stay tuned for that. <music> 